Ask everyone to rise to their feet and please remove any hats. We have two talented special young ladies to help us here tonight, starting with senior Reagan Harris, who's going to lead us in prayer, followed by junior Caitlin Olson, who will be singing the national anthem. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for everything you've blessed us with today. Thank you for safe travels to Fort Bend to get here, and God, I pray for safe travels back tonight as well. I pray that these players play for your glory and this game is an injury-free game. God, I pray that we can honor those that have or are fighting cancer right now and honor breast cancer awareness. I pray that we not only wear the pink to raise awareness, but God, also pray for those in that situation and prayer for those who've been affected. God, I pray that you bless comfort, peace, and healing on individuals, but also families as well. Our community is so blessed to be here, and God, I pray that we glorify you for our actions. In Jesus' name I pray. Oh, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fights for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say. Does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Let's give it up for Kaylin Olson with the National Anthem, and Reagan Harris with the prayer. Four, Colby Gorman. Number 26, Jacob Rios. Number three, Laura Hawkins. Number 34, Austin Melvin. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Woodlands, Texas, where we have the district opener between the Woodlands Christian Academy Warriors and the visiting Eagles of Fort Bend Christian Academy. Captains shaking hands and heading over to their sidelines. TWCA won the toss and deferred, so it will be the Eagles who will receive the opening kickoff. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Martin. Adam Mueller will join me momentarily. Of course, TWCA coming in undefeated at 5-0. Jordan Black's Fort Bend Christian Academy Eagles are 2-3, and three, but don't let the record fool you. Even though they've lost their last three games, they've lost them to higher classification teams, and they are picked to be... Uh, one of the teams that will challenge TWCA for the district title this year. Warrior Boosters promote school spirit and provide support to the athletic and fine arts programs to enhance the experience for their students. 
Join Warrior Boosters today to support the Warrior Athletes at TWCA.net slash boosters. A variety of levels are available that will get you into all home games for free. So the Warriors are undefeated in large part because their defense is so, so stingy. They have not given up any points in the fourth quarter this year. They have 13 takeaways, and the offense has a two-headed monster in Rora Hawkins and Ryan Leslie in the backfield. Between the two of them, they have almost amassed 1,100 yards rushing. And number 21, Bly Spray. It'll be Bruno Babato to kick things off for TWCA. Back deep to receive right, for Fort Bend Christian Bobato. Academy is Marcus Cretien. Babato has 15 touchbacks. We'll see if Cretien decides to take it out, and he will. Going to try the right side. Gets through the second level, past the 20-yard line. He'll be stopped at about the 21, and that's where Fort Bend Christian Academy will take over to start their initial drive. They're led by Brady Deaver, their quarterback. He's 40 of 81 passing this season, but almost half of his attempts came last game. He was 17 for 40, had three touchdowns and, and two interceptions. In the backfield is Sam LeBlu, and he is joined by Sorrell Taylor. They flank him. This is a spread offense team, and it's going to be LeBlu trying to get to the outside. He's fast, but this time the Warriors are faster. Let's bring in Adam Mueller, and Adam, this defense is going to be tested tonight, but that's a good play to start. Yeah, Chris, and we saw it on the kickoff as well. These Eagles runners are patient. They look for their blocks to develop, but the pursuit there from the Warriors defense is just too good. Defensive line, Eli Tokabens, a senior, Grayson Ellis in the nose guard, and... Ezekiel Harado, the senior, will meet the rest of them after this play. It's loss of five, second and 15. They're going to try LeBlu. He's got a crease this time. He can break. He's got one man to beat. He's got a first down across the 40 all the way to the 44-yard line. That's how quick that Sam LeBlu can get into the secondary. Yeah, just uh, wasn't really touched for about 15 yards there. A lot of room on that left side, and they're picking up the pace here. That's right. They're going no huddle. Three receivers to the right side. First and 10 from the 44. This time they'll throw into the flat. Completed and into Warrior territory. Pass caught by number 11, Braylon Gardoni, who gets the start in the slot. That's a gain of seven, and they're already back to the line of scrimmage. Quick count, going to the flat, same play. Other side, first down to Cretien and Moore inside the 45. And the chains will move. Meeting the linebackers, Max Olivier, Sean Kane, Austin Veldekens, and Ryan Leslie, all seniors except for Leslie, who is a junior. We'll meet the DBs momentarily. So already a good little drive into Warrior territory and rolling right into the flat and dropped. The pass falls incomplete to Donovan Dixon. Defensive backs for the Warriors, Xavier Richmond, a junior, Derek Felder, a senior, Jacob Rios, a junior, and Daniel Benkovics, a senior. So second and 10 on the first incompletion of the night for Deaver. Play action. Cretien over on the slant, heading for the sideline across the 25. He's going to outrun everybody. Lots of speed on that offense. And Marcus Cretien scores the first touchdown of the night. And Fort Bend Christian has the early lead with less than two minutes gone by in the game. Yeah, pretty simple for Deaver. I mean, he's going to his first option and it's wide open over the middle. And good speed from the receiver makes it work and a quick touchdown for the Eagles. Marcus Cretien had a couple of receptions last game. As they try the swinging gate, they line up for it. We'll see if they head it, if they snap it or if they bring the lineman back. And they will. So they will try a conventional extra point. Kicker is Ben Longbottom who lines up and misses the extra point. So with 10.09 left to play in the first quarter, Woodlands Christian Academy will touch the ball first, already down six points. 
So that was quick. Quick little drive that marched 79 yards, ending with a 44-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Christian. Christian, excuse me. As we said, these teams are pretty evenly matched. According to the TAPS 2 rankings, the Woodlands Christian Academy is ranked 5th in the state, while Fort Bend Christian Academy is ranked number 6th. And in TAPS overall, TWCA is ranked number 12, and the Eagles are ranked number 14. So two teams pretty evenly matched, but it is Fort Bend Christian who gets on the board first. Yeah, we'll see if that Warrior defense can adapt to that no-huddle no offense from the Eagles uh, and maybe pick up. Certainly we saw Cretien a lot in that first drive. Uh, those good, those quick runners, those outside passes that they like to do. Uh, we'll see how they can adjust. Yeah, that's one of those things you can just not simulate in practice, no matter how hard you try. So Longbottom tees it up. And we'll put his leg into it. A low liner. That's going to go, and that may or may not get into the end zone. And it's not going to. It stops at the one. And at the four-yard line is where the Woodlands Christian Academy will start. It was a gamble, and they lost as Blake Wiley was waiting for it to go into the end zone. But it was a perfect, perfect kick by Longbottom. And already the Warriors offense starting a hole. Yeah, and Hawkins was sort of faded to the far side of the field and didn't even go after the kickoff. And Wiley was going to let it go into the end zone actually makes the heads-up play and picks it up uh, to prevent another touchdown for the Eagles. Yeah, they weren't lined up very well, and it, and it cost them. So Josh Johnson and company, they'll spot the ball on the five-yard line, a long way to go, and already down six points. And the handoff is to Rorick Hawkins with first through with the first down 20. Going to try and cut to the right side. He's going to be gang-tackled at the 34-yard line. But a 29-yard gain for Rorick Hawkins to start things off for the Warriors. Yeah, Rorick Hawkins, such great acceleration through the middle. I mean, he's already into the, the backfield of the de defense before you even know it. Uh, and a big gain is exactly what the Warriors needed backed up so far and towards their own end. Rorick Hawkins comes into the game before that run with 632 yards on 66 carries, averaging almost 10 yards a carry, nine touchdowns and three 100-yard games. So now they have the full house kind of pistol look from the 35-yard line with a man in motion. And again, it's Hawkins around the left side this time with blockers in front. Pretty good pursuit, then a big hit on the far side by Fort Ben Christian after a four-yard gain. Let's quickly meet the backs. Josh Johnson, the junior quarterback. We talked about Rorick Hawkins, also a junior. Their receivers, the slot backs are Jack Van Til, a junior, and Sebastian Bringleson, a senior. Blake Wiley is the senior wideout. Jack Cole is the other senior wideout. We'll meet the linemen. Uh, just a moment. So call it, they only gave him two yards, so we're going to bring up second down and eight. Full house that way, and Rorick's following blockers. Hit in the backfield and dropped. Good penetration by the defense of Fort Bend Christian Academy. Going to bring up third and ten. The two tackles are Keller Davis and Max Abernathy, junior and senior respectively. Connor Barham is a junior guard, along with J.C. Lopez, a sophomore, and Colby Gorman is the senior center. So third and nine for the Warriors. We'll see if Johnson decides to put it up. They have three receivers to the near side of the field. Will they try a wide receiver screen? Looks that way and just airmails his pass, which is what he needed to do because the receiver was double covered, Blake Wiley, and an on-target pass may very well have been intercepted. Yeah, just a four-man rush from the Eagles. Uh, not too complicated, but Johnson, maybe a little bit of miscommunication with his receivers. Uh, looked like there was a couple of go patterns on that outside. Couldn't find them. So that will bring in the punter, Dane LeMaster, for his ninth punt of the season. Standing back is Brian Domino to receive the punt. It appears right now that Fort Bend Christian Academy is setting up a return. And they are. Lots of time. A low punt that's going to bounce in front of Domino. Domino's going to have to let it go, and he will, as the Paul rolls inside the 25-yard line. And it will be down at the 22. 
So the Eagles get the ball back with 8.39 left in the first quarter and leading 6 to nothing. Did you know that funds from Warrior Boosters made it possible to complete the brand new boys and girls locker rooms? Join Warrior Boosters today to support their warrior athletes at TWCA.net slash boosters. So Fort Bend Christian Academy, they went up tempo last time. See if they continue to do it. Play action over the middle, caught and ran right by his man and he's gone. Brian Domino broke a tackle on the slant, 78 yards. The last two plays have been long touchdowns for Fort Bend Christian Academy. Just a quick slant route, same route to the other side of the formation, and it's good for a long touchdown pass. Yeah, man-to-man -man coverage out there on the outside, and it's, uh, yeah, not very complicated for Deaver. It just looks first option, goes there, and he beats his man. It's a long touchdown. It's hard to tell if it was a run pass option. My guess is it's not, but it was a perfect pass either way by Deaver. They'll try the, oh, now they go for two as they quickly toss it. Will they get the push into the end zone? No signal yet. And no good. As they toss it to Bryce Grays, that's what they try and do out of the swinging gate, but good job by the defense to keep him out of the end zone and the two point conversion fails. So only a 12 second drive and it's 12 to nothing. Eagles now leading the Warriors early in the first quarter, and the Warrior defense is reeling. Yeah, such a unique play to see, but the Warriors stick to their assignments of a lot of bodies in front of the runner uh, and just push them back. Perhaps they saw that on film and practiced it a little bit. Either way, they did what they were supposed to do, but now it's up to the offense. They had. Rora Hawkins opening 30-yard burst, and then the next three plays, they had to punt it back, and one play later, it's a two-score game. I believe this is the largest deficit of the season that TWCA has faced thus far. This is an offense that can score quickly. But I'm sure TWCA fans would just appreciate a nice long drive. Not much of a history between these two teams. They've only met twice before. Last year, it was the Eagles winning at home 55 to 28. Then in 2017, also played in Fort Bend. The Warriors got the best of the Eagles 27 to 16. This is the first time they've met here in the Woodlands. So now let's see if they can get the kickoff return right. Longbottom kicked it over to the left over everybody. This time he kicks it straighter and it's gonna bounce and does get into the end zone. Should, I thought it would be an automatic touchback if it went into the end zone. And that is a touchback. I'm not sure what the referee, why he made the player run it out to about the five yard line, but once it crosses the line, that should be automatically on the 25. Yeah, referee looks a little unsure. We saw Seth Montan run over there and talk to him about it. Should the referee still talking it over. You know, see that called as soon as it goes into the end zone. You see the referee make that call. Now he seems to think that because it was fielded on the way out that the ball is live. But I don't know that that's the rule. Once it crosses the line, if it's not touched, and cooler heads have prevailed. So a minor break for the Woodlands Christian Academy as they will get it on the 25. So a lot more breathing room to run their entire offense. Now we'll, we'll see if the Eagles continue to try and penetrate and break up that run game. Pistol formation, Hawkins in the backfield behind Johnson. They're going to run the option. Johnson makes two men miss, turns it up, gets some good yardage across the 35, actually just short of the 35. They'll give Josh Johnson nine yards on first down. Yeah, great run by Josh Johnson. A couple jukes left and right. Uh, had the option of Hawkins on the outside, but took it himself. Johnson is averaging 5.8 yards a carry and has four touchdowns on the ground coming into tonight's game. Oh, okay. 
So this time the two slot backs are to the right on second down and one. High snap, and Hawkins gets it first down and more into the secondary across the 40. Finally, finally spun down and around the 45-yard line by Blaine Baird. Yeah, Rorick Hawkins, you know, looks like the smallest man on the field, but those arm tackles aren't going to take him down, and he, he gets a big game. So the runs to Hawkins, for the most part, have worked. He has been stopped behind the line of scrimmage once. And now they line the two slot backs up in the backfield on the right side. First down from the 45. Hawkins going to try the right side. Turned in nicely, and Hawkins going to be dropped for a loss. Nice job to set the edge by number six, James Donovan. That's the second tackle for loss Hawkins has sustained in this first quarter. Yeah, it's a good contain from the Eagles' defense. Hawkins tried to cut it outside, and it was a good idea, uh, but couldn't quite get to that spot. Uh, and was stopped for a loss. And a big body in the middle. Hard to block number 72, Jalen Zuber. Second down and 12, they're gonna try Hawkins again. And again, he's bottled up, but he'll get positive yardage across the 45 to about the 46, but that brings up a third down and nine. And the last third and long, Johnson airmailed his pass in the flat as they try to wide receiver screen. Let's see if they try and throw downfield this time. Yeah, and you'd think this is a, a must-pass situation here on third and nine. Uh, we'll, we haven't seen the Warriors throw the ball a lot here early, but you'd expect it to happen now. Go, Warriors! This time Hawkins splits out wide to the left. They give him some cushion. Johnson's in the backfield. Now they roll up on him, and Hawkins comes in motion. Will they try the hand sweep? No high. They fake it. And they're going long. Has a man open, and Cole, he's open. Incomplete as the pass was underthrown, and great recovery by Ben Longbottom. So it's fourth down and punting time once again on what could have been a long pass, possibly a touchdown. But Jack Cole had to come back for it, and it was knocked away at the last minute. Yeah, it's a great idea. Good play call, vertical route. He just had to come back to it. The defender did just enough. Uh, not quite work out. Maybe just a little bit more uh, air on that throw, and Johnson could have made that work. But a good sign for the Warriors, I would say, on offense. But they're going to have to punt it away to this high-octane offense of the Eagles. Again, they set up a return. That's a nice punt by LeMaster. Fair catch going to be called for and made, but it takes an eagle bounce, and it will be down right at the 20-yard line. So with 5.49 left to play in the first quarter, it's a 12-0 lead for the Eagles, and they had the ball for the third time tonight. And the Woodlands Christian Academy come in rolling 5-0, scoring at least 35 points in all the games, and the most points they've given up in any game is 17. They give up another touchdown. That mark will be eclipsed already. Play action, looking to throw in the flat. There's that slant again, and he breaks another tackle. It's going to be another long touchdown pass. Three long touchdown passes, and that's Marcus Cretien second of the quarter. And again, three straight plays. Three straight long touchdown passes for the Fort Bend Christian Eagles. Yeah, and there was a little bit of confusion on the defensive side of the ball. I think that was Steve Austin who ran onto the field just as the snap was happening so the Warriors could get 11 men out there. And as you say, it's sort of the same formula, the slant and the tackle broken, and he's gone. Now they'll bring the line back and try and kick the extra point. As long bottom lines up. This Warrior crowd is in shock. Snaps a little high, but it is good this time. So with 5.37 left to play in the first quarter, it's already 19 to nothing. The Eagles lead the Warriors, who have now surrendered their most points on defense in a game all season long, and we just played half a quarter. And it's really, most the last two were just poor tackling. I mean, great job by the receivers in Domino and Cretien to break tackles. 
Fritz Ian breaking an ankle tackle, but like you said, I think it was the pre-play confusion that really doomed that. Right, and you can see the slight adjustment I mean, from the second touchdown. It was man-to-man, -man, one on one on the outside. And you had some safety help on that on that third touchdown. You just couldn't make the play. And those Eagle uh, wide receivers just a bit too fast, a bit too hard to take down. And Warriors trying to keep their focus here on defense which is difficult to do, and you can bet that the Eagles will keep running that play until it's stopped, because it's a high percentage pass. And now, for the first time, we have twin safeties on the kick return team, so no more, hopefully no more adventurous kickoffs, as Hawkins is joined by Derek Felder, both standing just inside their 10. So we'll see where Longbottom decides to put this one. And all of a sudden, you wonder if Coach McClanahan's team's got to get out of their game plan already. That goes into the end zone, and the referee signals a touchback, which is refreshing. <laughs> so the Warriors get it on their 20, and they've got to find something that works. So basically, when they've gained good yardage on first down, they've moved the sticks. And when they've lost ground on first down, They've been forced to punt, which is the basic formula for any offense. Yeah, it seems a bit hot and cold. We've had a few big runs from Rorick Hawkins, and then, you know, a couple plays early in the downs where they get stopped, and they have to throw the ball. Uh, then the drive sort of stops out, and the Eagles make the stop. And Johnson, 42 of 77 coming into tonight, but he's missed on his first two attempts. Has five, averaging 117 yards passing per game. time it's Leslie on the inside handoff other side and a good open field tackle on the far side to keep Leslie from getting big yardage. Gonna be only a gain of two as he's brought down by Jackson Powers. Yeah a little bit of trickery there from the Warriors Blake Wiley coming from the opposite end faking the pitch. Uh, again good idea maybe look like he could have got more yards on that far side. So this time not a big gain on first down but a positive one. And now Leslie comes out of the game, a little bit more confusion. And Sebastian Briggleson moves into the backfield. Lots of motion, plenty of time in the play clock. And it's Hawkins off the right side. He'll get outside. How much yardage will he get across the 30? No. Hit at the 29-yard line, and that was a clean hit. It was inbounds. So Hawkins gains one yard, but it's going to be third and long once again for the Woodlands Christian Academy. Yeah, and long bottom with good pursuit there. Hawkins got the outside. It's sort of what he'd been look, he's been looking for in these last couple runs, uh, but couldn't quite make it past the 30-yard line there. And again, it seems like this might have be a throwing down here. Well, perhaps you maybe run a draw, or if you have a screen, you run that. Right. Because the last two attempts have not been great. They do spread the field. Hawkins is in the backfield on third down and six. Eagles showing blitz on the far side. Johnson looks to throw, pulls it down. Now gonna try the left side, has room. Can he get to the sticks? First down, the 37 yard line. As he goes to the wide side of the field and he outruns Sorrell Taylor to get to the sticks. Yeah, great read by Johnson. You had a few vertical routes that pulled the defensive backs downfield. He makes a pump fake and sees the room on that left side and runs for first down. When you're down three scores in the first quarter, you'll take anything. And now, hopefully, the Woodlands Christian Academy trying to get a first down and perhaps even get into Eagle territory for the first time. Three receivers to the right side. Will they give it to Hawkins, or will they try the wide receiver screen? No option right side. Johnson's going to cut it back, and Pursuit gets him at around the 42-yard line. As big Jalen Zaber comes down from his nose guard spot and chases Johnson down after a five-yard gain. Yeah, and some rhythm in this drive now. The, the option with Johnson, he's sort of feeling it with his feet, uh, and that's a nice first down gain. As we said, Johnson is at home running, and if he's a weapon, that can hopefully keep this Eagle defense off of its game a little bit. On second down, it is Hawkins following his blockers. First down across the 50 and tackled it around the 47-yard line of Fort Bend Christian Academy. So another 10-yard gain for Rorick Hawkins. 
who's been the lone consistent bright spot in this offense thus far for the Warriors. Yeah, and a good sign for the Warriors' offense. I think it was about nine were packing the box for the Eagles' defense, and Hawkins is still able to just run through the middle for the big game. It's good rhythm here on this drive. So not, even though they run no huddle, they don't run up-tempo like the Eagles do. This time they have slot backs on either side on first down from the Eagle 47. Johnson looks to throw. He's going to throw it long as far as he can and right through the hands of Blake Wiley incomplete. That's a tough catch over his opposite shoulder, but he's going to wish he caught that one at the 15. Yeah, similar to that play uh, we saw a couple drives earlier. This time Johnson gets enough air on that ball, and it, as you said, a tough back shoulder play. Wiley not quite gets through his arms. Wiley is their top receiver by far. 308 yards receiving. Nobody else on the roster for the Warriors has even 100 yards. This time three receivers to the top of the screen on second and 10. Hawkins eight yards off the ball. Going to try the option right side. Johnson's going to take it again. Cuts inside and brought down at the 42-yard line. So pick up of about five, a manageable third down. And... So it looks like they're taking Hawkins on the pitch on the, on the option, and that's just fine with Josh Johnson. Yeah, it's, it's good blocking up front from the big guys for the Warriors because those linebackers for the Eagles not selling to the far, to the far side where the three receivers are. Uh, Johnson's still able to get about five yards. If they gain some yardage, you've got to think it's four down territory. Three receivers to the left. So do they keep it on the ground? going to try the option left side. He's got room again, and he's got much more room. Can he get to the sticks? No. Gets inside the 40. So it'll bring up fourth down and short, probably about two yards. So I'm thinking Coach McClanahan is going to go for it. Yeah, it's great patience by Johnson. He sees the defender commit to the running back on the option play. Uh, can't quite get the first down, but this a huge play for the Warriors offense to keep them in this game early. Clock ticking toward two minutes. It's fourth down and a full three yards. This time the two slot backs are on the left side. And Hawkins is in front of Johnson and now they switch. And the timeout gonna be called by Fort Bend Christian Academy. They wanna make sure their defense is right because this could be you know, a near kill shot if they can get the Warriors stopped and get the ball back for their offense of three scores. Yeah, we talked about a long drive for the Warriors to sort of have the ball, get, get in a rhythm. And this has been it, um, and a huge player on fourth down uh, for them to get a little bit more time on the ball and maybe uh, score here in the first quarter. So you wouldn't think this is a, an Eagle team coming in with a three-game losing streak, but as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, those were against higher classification schools, tougher competition. And they are picked by many to challenge for the district title and trying to unseat the Woodlands Christian Academy. They're trying to battle them and perhaps Second Baptist. Those are the three contenders for the TAPS to Texas Division title. So what does Coach McClanahan come up with? Fourth down and three as they huddle up. Once again, they have all three backs in front of Josh Johnson to the right side this time. Last time they shifted. Will they shift this time? They will. Hawkins shift over to the left. Josh Johnson going to try and get around the corner, heading for the sticks, and I think he's short. He tried to get to the outside, did not get north and south quickly enough. Josh Johnson with the run. Looks like it'll be a little short of the first down. And no official signal yet. Now there is. He gained two yards, so the ball goes over on downs to the Fort Bend Christian Academy Eagles. They'll take over at their own 39-yard line. Yeah, pretty simple play there for the Warriors. Johnson using his speed to get to the outside. But it's good pursuit from the Eagles, and they just got him about a yard short. Uh, and I can see him here on the sideline looking disappointed. So that was a good drive for the Warriors. We're seeing steady improvement on that offensive side of the ball. Uh, couldn't quite make it work there. So now the Woodlands Christian Academy will be happy just to keep him out of the end zone on this first play. And in motion out of the backfield. They throw the swing pass, and that, that goes nowhere. 
something for the TWCA faithful to cheer about as Gardoni is stopped for a three-yard loss. Yeah. A little pass on the outside there. Great pursuit from Gardoni. There's a few Warrior defenders out there. Make a great play. It was a good start to this drive for the Warriors defense. They can keep pushing the Eagles back. Maybe get their first stop of the game. As with many up-tempo teams, if they lose yardage, they often stop the up-tempo. They only tend to put the pedal to the metal after they're gaining yards and getting first down. So now it's second down at 12. Two receivers either side. We'll see if Deaver puts it up again. Already has three touchdown passes in this first quarter. He's going to roll to the right side, throw, and that's a, that may be a lateral. If that's the case, it's a two-yard loss. No signal for an incomplete pass, so that was one of those run pass options, and they are going to spot it back at the 35-yard line. That's a two-yard loss, and now it's third and long for Fort Bend Christian. Yeah, definitely a backwards pass. We saw big number nine. But they're not spotting it, so they're not calling it a backwards pass. Uh, we saw big number 90, Elijah Togabins, in the backfield right away. Uh, but a huge third down now for the Warriors defense. It was very close. Officials thought it was just down the line and forward. Still third and 13. Can the Warriors get a stop? Pressure this time on Deaver, and he will not get away. He'll get across the 40-yard line, but only a two-yard gain. And great pursuit that time by Grayson Ellisor. And it's fourth down and long for the Eagles. And here comes their punt team for the first time tonight. Yeah, again, good signs for the Warriors on offense. Now good sign on defense. A couple negative plays for the Eagles and a big stop. Blaine Baird inside his 30 to punt it away. Now Derek Felder has not returned any for touchdowns. He did take one to the end zone, but it was called back for holding in their home opener. And the quarter will end before the punt snap is in away, but the Warriors finally something good going for them as they give up three scores in quarter number one. They're down 19 to nothing to the visiting Eagles of Fort Bend Christian Academy. You're watching TWCA High School Football on Vibe Sports. You will no longer have to stress about parking by joining Warrior Boosters at the championship level or higher. You will receive a reserve parking spot plus more perks. Visit TWCA.net backslash boosters to join today. Coach McClanahan is going to see what his team is made of. Three quarters to play, down three scores. They'll get the ball back after thus far being unsuccessful on offense. Baird's punt almost blocked. It's a low knuckler, and it will bounce. Felder will not get a chance to return it, and it will settle at about the 28-yard line. So only about a 28-yard punt. Decent field position for the Woodlands Christian Academy. Warriors got into Eagle territory, but on fourth and three, were unable to move the sticks. And if you're a Warrior fan, you would love to see Johnson just complete a pass, even if it's a short pass, even if it's for a short game. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. We saw Hawkins a lot, and we saw Johnson running the ball, but uh, maybe involve Wiley on the outside a bit. Uh, and But good signs for the Warriors at the end of that first quarter. Three receivers to the far side of the field. They're going to option again. No problem. Johnson actually stumbles, but keeps his feet. Now cuts back first down and more. He'll get into Eagle territory and then run out of bounds inside the Eagle 40. Just exactly what the Warrior faithful need. A 33-yard gain by Josh Johnson. That's his longest of the night. Yeah, you know, you stick to that run. and I see some hands on, on some hips there already for the Eagles defense. And... Warriors certainly starting to move the ball more and more. Hopefully as this goes on, the defense might tire out. But they've got to get in the end zone first to the Warriors. Same formation to the right side on first down inside the 40. Fumbles the snap, and that's a mistake that can kill a drive as Johnson, he fumbled the exchange 
as he never really got the snap cleanly, and that's going to be a 10-yard loss on first down. Yeah, that one hurts. Again, we talked about mixing it in, mixing in some passes, and how about second and 20, you'd think. Have to change up the game plan for that this drive. That's not something we normally see. They fumbled a few times here and there, but not on something egregious like that. And now, second down and 20. They have the two slot backs flanking Johnson. He's looking to throw again. Long one on one. Cole is there. Caught! 16 yard line first down. Check that. That's Blake Wiley. Single eight, not double eight. And that's pretty good coverage on the far side by the cornerback, but that's just a perfect pass and an excellent catch by Blake Wiley, his 20th of the season. Yeah, beautiful throw by Johnson that time. Wiley adjusts, makes a beautiful catch, and a huge play after that 10-yard loss for the Warriors. 33-yard reception, and it puts the ball inside the 20-yard line. Hawkins on the first red zone carry may get back to the line of scrimmage at the 16. Now they're going to say he lost a yard. So bring up second down and long once again. Yeah, you'd hope, hope after the long pass play that maybe the defense pays a little more respect to those outside receivers and get Hawkins involved again on the inside. Couldn't quite get a push on that first down carry. Wiley, Cole, and Keaton Harvey split out wide to the right on second down and 11. They're going to option right side. Johnson's going to, nice move by Johnson to cut back inside, spun around inside the 15. And still pushing the pile forward, no whistle yet. And they finally blow the whistle and mark it at around the 12-yard line. That's going to bring up third down and about five. When that play started, it looks like there's a lot of real estate, but there are three defensive backs, or three defenders rather, who are lurking and waiting on that pitch. So it was a nice job by Johnson to recognize that and cut it back inside. Yeah, early on we saw the option come to the side that didn't have those trip receivers. Now this time we go to the side with the receivers. Uh, some success with that play. Johnson likes to keep it early here. This time the receivers are to the right side. Cole is all alone on the left on third down and five. And in motion, that's Harvey trying to come around the left side with blockers. But he's not going to get to the line of scrimmage. With the run. And so now it's decision time once again. Fourth down for the Warriors. Down three scores, and they're going to send the field goal unit out. Bruno Babato has a field goal this year. We, saw, we were here for it two weeks ago in the home opener. He made it from 39 yards. This won't be as long. This will be only 30. It'll be from the left hash mark, and it will at least get the Warriors on the board and make it a two-score game if he can convert. Jack Cole comes out late. Now they're ready. It's away. It's a low liner. No good. Never had a chance. Pulled it left. And the Warriors come up empty for the second straight time in Eagle territory. And it's still 19 to nothing with 842 left to play in the first half. Warrior Boosters would like to thank the many generous banner sponsors seen around Warrior Stadium. If you would like to show your businesses or families Warrior Spirit, you can purchase a banner to go up at one or all of the sports venues on campus. Head to twca.net slash boosters for more information. So the Warrior defense did stop Fort Bend Christian Academy on their last drive, three and out as a matter of fact. We'll see if they put it up in the air. Deaver throws into the flat to Chrétien, and he's going the wrong way, and he's not going anywhere. Corralled by Max Olivier. We're going to see what forward progress gives them. They're going to spot him at about the 17-yard line, so it's only a three-yard loss, but a great play by the Warrior defense on first down. Yeah, Olivier with great pursuit there on the outside. And again, these last two drives, looks like the Warriors defense have has the uh, Eagles offense number so far. A little bit Christian going a little bit quickly. They throw into the flat once again, trying to get outside. And to the 27 yard line is where the Eagles will get the ball. They bring up third down and short. The pass is caught by Bryce Grays. So now a big play for the Warrior D. Can they force another three and out? 
And it'll be third and eight because the lineman moved on the far side. First illegal procedure call, actually first penalty of the entire game. It was either Bennett Warren, the big sophomore, or Jalen Zuber on the far side who moved. So what could be a possible break for the Warrior defense if they can get a stop here. Deaver with three receivers to his right. LeBlue to his left. Deaver looking left to LeBlue out of the backfield. Makes a nice catch first down. Tries to hurdle the player and will be brought down at the 40 yard line. Nice job by Deaver to see man to man coverage. And once LeBlue sprinted to the flat, he was wide open and it was an easy first down. Yeah, the Eagles offense likes to go to those outside receivers. Uh, Warriors defenses need to adjust. You know, we know about the big bodies they have on the inside, but can those defensive backs start making plays? Play action. There's the flat route again as. This time it's a zone call and lots of cushion on the outside. Surrendered by the Warrior defense and it's an eight yard gain for the Eagles. That time Donovan Dixon, the recipient of the pass. Inside 7.05 to play in the first half. Warriors again playing a zone on second and two. Row into the flat, caught first down inside the 45 and brought down by Felder, but the chains will move again this time it's Braylon Gardoni, whose last two receptions were for losses. This time it's a first down. Yeah, you talk about the zone coverage there. The Eagles offense just making it really simple, just those little flat hook patterns, catching the ball five, six yards. This time the zone's to the wide side of the field, but it's a give up the middle to LeBlue. Breaks one tackle, but not two. A nice ankle tackle at the 41-yard line, limiting him to just two yards. Going to bring up second down and eight and give credit to Austin Pelicans leading the team with six tackles per game for that stop. This time spread, second and eight as they go quickly. They give to LeBlue again. This time he's hitting the backfield and still going. Breaks four tackles, gets the first down. Finally drags the pile to about the 21-yard line. That should have been about a one-yard gain. Instead, it's a big first down run for the Eagles. Yeah, a few missed tackles up there for the Warriors, uh, but good good pursuit from Felder. Uh, touchdown saving tackle there. And now pedal to the metal, looking for the slant route. at the out route, caught first down at the 10-yard line. Depends on where they spot it, it's Chrétien, and I believe it will be first and goal for the Eagles, trying to get their fourth touchdown of this first half. And now, Timeout going to be called, and it will be taken by Chris McClanahan with 5.51 left to play. He wants to settle this Warrior defense now, now that it's a goal-to-go situation, the first one of the game. So right now, you can see this Eagle offense, when they get into a rhythm, they are deadly. As Deaver can throw the out route, he can throw the slant route, he can throw the swing pass to his back. Hasn't been shown to throw downfield yet, but he hasn't needed to. Yeah, it's that cushion we talked about with the zone defense. Just not making it complicated for himself and throwing it to his receivers who have made good plays, very athletic, very fast. Uh, and Warriors having to adjust early, put a safety back deeper. Uh, it's really been difficult on this drive for them to stop those patterns. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just roll up to man-to-man -man coverage and take that cushion away? Well, that would be great, except these receivers are quick and fast and if you miss one tackle, they're gone, which has already happened a couple of times. So really it's kind of a catch-22 for Coach McClanahan. We're ready for play. Three receivers to the left side for Deaver. Back to his right. Going to give it to LeBlue, trying to find room. And he will find very little. Maybe a yard as he headed for his big offensive tackle but couldn't go any further. Sean Kane comes in from his linebacker spot to stop for a short game. So we'll see how the Eagle offense operates in a goal-to-go situation. It's blue again. He runs by some tacklers and will get toward the five-yard line. But he's brought down by Ezekiel Harado, actually at the six. So it's third down and goal. The touchdown passes have been 44, 78, and 79 yards. This, as we said, the first goal to go situation for the Eagles. And on the first two play, the Warriors' defense have proved up to the task. 
Both have been run plays. We'll see if Deaver puts it up on third and goal from the six. Looks to the right side. Fade round. Kretien. Touchdown. Well, they're going to say, well, that might be offensive pass interference because I did not see the touchdown signal from the line judge. He threw his flag, and they're going to say Kretien pushed off, I think. And if that's the case, take the touchdown off the board and move the ball back toward the 20. It's pretty good coverage on that side, but Kretien managed to get separation late. And I believe the officials are saying he pushed off. And he did. So the Woodlands Christian Academy fans can breathe a sigh of relief. They don't go down by two scores, or rather four scores, excuse me, but still a third down play as it's a 15-yard penalty marked back all the way back to the 22-yard line. Not sure about the kicking ability of Jordan Black Eagles, so it could be four down territory, especially given what happens here. And with their long passes earlier in the first half, this might be a blessing in disguise. A lot more room to operate as Deaver looks to throw on third and long, pressured from the backside this time. And it just shovels it forward. And we'll get back almost to the original line of scrimmage at about the nine yard line. So they gave it to to LeBlue, the and now it's fourth and goal, and I would think, well, they're going to bring the field goal team out. So yep. Long Bottom comes out with the tee, they'll, go, they'll try a field goal from the left half. Yeah, it was Elijah Tokabins who was in the backfield there. Uh, and made Deaver sort of improvise, and it was a pretty good shovel pass, but a big stop for the Warriors defense. 28-yard field goal attempt for Long Bottom make it a 22-0 game. Kick is away. No good. Off to the left. So each team with a missed field goal. However, there is a flag on the play. If it's against the Warriors, it depends on what kind of flag it is to see whether or not it's an automatic first down. Oh, personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct. Now, did it come during the play or after? If it's during the play, it might be an automatic first down. And that looks like that's what's going to happen. They move it half the distance to a goal to the goal, and another huge first mistake for the, for the Warriors. Didn't see what happened, but then you just can't have that on a field goal attempt. Yeah, that one hurts, especially after the stop on defense. Uh, as you said, that kicking game may be a little bit questionable. Also didn't see what happened, but see if the Warriors can make the stop on the goal line again here. Sometimes what happens, they call that if you jump over the center trying to block the field goal. I don't know if that's what happened, but it could. First and goal now. This time it's a direct snap. And looking to throw is Labou up in the end zone for anybody. It knocked away and almost intercepted by Felder. Derek Felder came that close to getting his sixth interception of the season. They try a little trick play on first down, and it's incomplete. Yeah, Felder and Rios both back there. Uh, and sort of the receiver for the Eagles playing defense, making sure that one was incomplete, right, not intercepted. It's actually double covered, and, and now that's going to be a five-yard penalty on the Eagles because the left side of the line moves for the second time in this drive. Well, that'll put the ball back around the 10. Can the Warrior defense stiffen again after giving a fresh set of downs on an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on fourth down? Second and goal outside the 10-yard line. Two receivers either side. Beaver looks to throw. Has time looking right side on the flag round. That time, clean touchdown. Well-designed play, and Brian Domino has his second touchdown catch of the night. Yeah, Deaver had some time there to go through his options, and Felder on that outside couldn't quite get to that ball. Uh, and the mistake's just hurting the Warriors there. Well-designed play as they had receivers running inside. Domino cuts outside, ditches his man, and beats his defender to the sideline, catches the football. 
And again, Longbottom to try the extra point. He's one of two. After they elect not to try the two-point conversion with the swinging gate. That kick is up, and it is good. So with 3.41 left to play, the Eagles get a reprieve on fourth down and take advantage of it. They now lead the Warriors 26 to nothing. The Warriors with time for one more drive here in the first half. They've come close, failed on fourth down in the Eagle territory, Eagles territory and also missed a field goal. They're knocking on the door and hopefully they can break through across the goal line on this first drive or this last drive of the half. Yeah, and you know, we said good signs there early in that second quarter, the stop on that drive for the first time for the Warriors defense. It looked like they had another one there. Just that personal foul penalty uh, gave the Eagles another opportunity. But uh, yeah, looking for some, some, a long drive here for the Warriors offense. Uh, sort of keep the ball away from their high powered offense of the Eagles. They will get the ball to start the second half. So if they can score with little time left on the clock, they can go into the locker room with a bit of momentum and perhaps come out and score again in the second half and make this a ball game. But first things first, as they now have three safeties back. Kick is away. It's going to force him back to the two-yard line. He's going to have to take it, trying to the far side. Can he outrun those players to the wall? He's not going to. Breaks tackle. Still going. Felder to the final wall of defenders and gets to the 29-yard line. So he should have been dropped at the 11. He does manage to get it out to the 29-yard line. Yeah. Great power and speed from Felder. Got through a few tackles and uh, setting it up from a much manageable starting position here for the Warriors offense. So 72 yards away from the end zone. Plenty of time, two timeouts remaining for both teams. So their whole playbook is open right now, especially the way that Rorick Hawkins can chew up yardage on the ground if he gets going. Drive starts with three receivers to the right side. Johnson, give to Hawkins, right side, gets to the outside. Into the secondary first down, now he shows his speed! But he can't run away. Breaks one tackle. Yes, he does. At the 10, one man to beat. And Rourke Hawkins has the Warriors on the board. Rourke Hawkins with his second longest touchdown run of the season. 72 yards. And it was that broken tackle at about the 25-yard line that propelled him into the end zone. I thought the speed would catch up to him. They didn't. And Hawkins has put some life into this home crowd. Yeah, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Warriors. Great acceleration through the hole. And then Hawkins gets to the outside, and he has his wide receivers out there blocking the defensive backs. And he gets through and, as you say, breaks that tackle right about the 25 for the big touchdown. So now Bobano try the extra point. Tough snap. But he gets the kick up, and it is good. Fun fact, that's the third 12-second touchdown drive of the game. First for the Warriors, though, and the Warrior faithful now only looking at a 19-point deficit instead of 26. So it's up to the Warrior defense to see if they can hold up their part of the bargain. Finally, something for the band to play about and the crowd to cheer about. And it comes with Rorick Hawkins, who's now over the 100-yard mark here in the first quarter. That's the, that would be the fourth time this season in five games that he has eclipsed triple digits in rushing yards. Yeah, and we've seen him break out some big runs early in this game and that obviously the biggest one he has the acceleration he has the speed he got great blocks on that outside from his receivers uh, to make that one happen now it's not out of the question that McClanahan would try an onside kick wouldn't say it would be my first choice but if he tries it and the Eagles aren't expecting it it might be a boon of course, we know that Bobato can kick it into the end zone. Last time, Cretien did run it out, but he didn't get it very far. So now it's the Eagles with the drive late in the half. As we said, they have two timeouts remaining. As we mentioned, the Warriors had them stopped for a field goal attempt, which they missed last drive, but a penalty 
gave the Eagles new life. They are trying an onside kick to the right. It bounces high. There's a chance. And it's a scramble for it. Warriors say they have it. No signal yet. Both teams say they have it. Flag comes in late. Still waiting for a signal, and it, it will be Eagles ball at the 42. But that was a textbook picture onside kick by Bruno Bobato. Get that high bounce and get your kickoff team a chance to get up for it. And they had a 50-50 team, a 50-50 chance rather, but the Warriors couldn't quite come up with it. Yeah, and Chris, you called it. You saw Bobato as he was setting the ball on the tee, looking over to his coach, and it was a great sort of hit, as you said, with the high bounce. Not sure what the flag was for from the far side where really none of the action was happening. And it came late during the scramble for the football. One of the players may have tried to block somebody away. I think it might be against the Eagles. If it is, and it's a personal foul, that'll be 15 yards back and suddenly Fort Ben Christian wouldn't have great field position that they would otherwise have, but officials still talking so about it. I like the interactive play. Again, I didn't think they would try it, but Coach McClanahan proved me wrong and actually turned out to be a great decision even though they didn't get the football. Like and it's another personal foul on Sportsmanlike Conduct call. This time it's against Fort Bend Christian Academy. So they'll spot the ball at the 28-yard line, which is where the Eagles will start the drive, leading 19 late in the first half. So now let's see if the Warrior defense can step up once again. You would have to think that Brady Deaver is going to put the ball up in the air on this drive. This time he has three receivers in a bunch formation to the right side. He's going to try an option to the left. He pitches it, but the blue is stopped up and the ball is on the ground. I'm not sure if it came out of bounds. In either case, it's going to be a short gain. LeBlue maybe gets to the 30-yard line. That was well played that time by the Warrior D. Yeah, Warriors defense prepared more for those outside plays. Only three rush on the line. A lot of defensive backs now in the game. That's a good stop. Their nickel or dime package, thinking that there's going to be a lot of passes on this drive. It is second down and nine. But they give to give it to LeBlue. Has a, almost a first down as they try and rip it out, but he keeps turning his legs forward and crosses the 40 for a 13-yard game. So Coach Black saw the dime package and all those DBs, and he decided to hand it off to his big running back. LeBlue, as we said, their workhorse. He had 262 yards last game. Procedure call. And yet another procedure call on the offense for Fort Bend Christian Academy. So they'll start first and 15. First and 15 for the Eagles. Also, Sam LeBlue carried the ball 33 times last week. Good for almost eight yards in average. Also had a touchdown. Does not have a touchdown thus far tonight. On first and 15 play action. Deaver looking to throw pressure from the backside. Wide open over the middle. And Cretien could not climb the ladder and get that one. That time he was wide open, crossing the formation, and it would have had an easy first down had that ball been on target. Yeah, and some issues there in the defensive backfield with the Warriors. Uh, again, couldn't get pressure on Deaver early, so he's got some time, got some time for the wide receiver routes to develop, and a little bit of a good break there for the Warriors. First time he tried to really throw downfield over the middle, and he missed his mark. Second down and 15. Throws to the out route, which he's done pretty well. Let his receivers get some yards after catch, and that works to perfection. It's a 10-yard gain. Going to bring up third down and five for the Eagles as the clock runs inside two minutes to play. It's 
So now with third down, call it six to go. Three receivers to the right. They're looking to that pass. That knocked. It's actually tipped, but it's still caught in the flat by Donovan Dixon. So, so again, they run the out route twice in a row on second and 15 and third and five, and they move the chains. Yeah, after a little bit of a mix-up, you said the throw over the middle. They just went back to what's been working this game on the out route. And again, those Warriors defensive backs giving them room to catch that, so they're taking advantage of it. Now he has time, blitz this time, throws over the middle, caught, Cretien breaks one tackle, jumps in tight of another, but a nice job by the defenders of the Warriors to keep him bottled up and stop him right around the first down marker. They're gonna say, they're gonna say he did get the first down at the 32 yard line. Yeah, not an easy job for Sean Kane, the linebacker out there with the speedy Cretien, but he does good work and contains him on the inside. It certainly tackle. looked like a, I'm sorry, that looked like a nine yard first down to me. And I think, yeah, that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna say, well, they're gonna move it back. And that's, that shouldn't be a first down because he didn't gain 10 yards, but they're giving it to him. And now, yes. now they're kind of moving everything around and it doesn't matter as the pass is complete and out of bounds inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. That's Brian Domino. So the clock is stopped at 112. So again, they're running those quick little out routes because that's what the defense is giving them. Yeah, and as we saw, this this may really be about containment here and preventing a touchdown. Want the kicker out there, especially as the clock winds down. The clock is the Warriors' friend here, so we hit the one-minute mark. Play action, hit as he throws over the middle. That's the slant route. Cretien hit at the five-yard line, but a flag thrown about 10 yards away from the play. I'm wondering if we have a man downfield or perhaps a hold on the offense. Clock stops with 52 seconds left. As it stands, it's a first down, or near a first down, but let's see what the officials are saying. It is illegal man downfield, so that means a lineman went too far away from the line of scrimmage to block, which you can't do. And they'll march the ball back toward the goalposts of the Eagles and spot it at the 29-yard line. 24, excuse me. So first down and 14. This time LeBlue switches to the right side. Receiver's in a bunch formation. Now LeBlue goes to the wide side of the field. Nobody goes with him, but that's not where Deaver looks. He throws over the middle. Jump ball, knocked away at the last minute. Daniel Bankovic with his eighth pass defense of the season. Nice recovery as Cretien was waiting in the middle of the back of the end zone and it's second down. Yeah, he was looked like a surefire touchdown there, but Bankovic just reads the flight of the ball and makes the tip right at the end. A great defensive play for the Warriors. So again, the Eagles with two timeouts and 45 seconds. And they have it second down and 14 at the 24. Deaver with two receivers either side. The blue goes in motion to the right. He looks back left on the wide receiver screen. Caught, breaks the first contain, heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Braylon Gardoni, his first touchdown catch of the night. And about his fourth or fifth grab overall. And that's the fifth touchdown of the first half for the visiting Eagles. Yeah, and just about the perfect play. The Warriors blitz from the outside. Uh, and not a lot of bodies on that outside. The wide receiver screen works to perfection for the Eagles. Eagles aren't even trying the swing at gate this time. Long bottoms, extra point is good. So with 35 seconds left in the first half, it's 33 to seven. And the Warriors are in a huge hole with only the second half to play. And this is a defense, as we said, coming into tonight, hadn't given up more than 17 points in a game. They've only given up 64 points, twice the total now, all season long, prior to tonight. Yeah, a little bit of a wake up call with the no huddle offense and the uh, out routes sort of over and over and over again. Not something that 
think the Warriors have seen a lot of this season is this kind of, you know, it's not a lot of vertical. There's not a lot of vertical routes. It's mostly just to the outside, isolating those defensive backs. Uh, and something that Coach McClanahan's going to have to adjust to. Uh, maybe a teaching moment for the Warriors. Definitely, and even if they can't come back in this one, they may play some teams who have similar offenses. They're going to have to work on it if they want to continue on later in the season and get to the playoffs. As we said, it's the district opener for both teams, so even if they drop tonight, right. still got a lot of chances to get into the playoffs, but definitely not what the faithful here at the Woodlands Christian Academy Stadium were thinking what would happen tonight. All right, let's give it up for the middle school cheer team. But you would think that, if possible, they can try and get a good return out of this. And if they happen to get it, say, to the Eagle side of the field, maybe they'll have a ghost of a chance to put points on the board before halftime. But barring a great return, I wouldn't see Coach McClanahan trying to throw it down the field. But he surprised me already this half, so we'll see. This is a short kick, and that's going to bounce around the 10, and that's going to be fielded and out of bounds. And so another great kickoff by Longbottom, perfectly placed. I don't think it would have gone out of bounds, or it was at least even money, and given what happened on the first kickoff, that was a wise decision. Yeah, it looks like their their game plan is to kick that in the corner. It's a really good placement. Why, why kick it out of the end zone when you can put it in play and give your guys a chance to get it? And Hawkins' momentum just sort of takes him out of bounds there. I would think they would give it to Hawkins. You know, he did break one earlier. Right. But I would, I'd be surprised if they're chucking it downfield. Maybe they'll try once. But remember, they've already had one fumbled snap from center. Simon will be Hawkins, and he is planted at the four-yard line. That's Ivan Jimmy Duckworth, who comes in and a... Actually, a timeout going to be called. And that's going to be called by the Eagles with 24 seconds left, which a little bit, I wouldn't say silly, but really all the Warriors can do if they want to is take two knees and run, the, run out the clock or make two running plays. I guess Coach Black is thinking that maybe they'll make a mistake and give up a safety or fumble the football or something. And so it's up to the Warriors, which have had a lot of things go bad this first half, to at least go into the locker room down 26 and no more. Right, with only one timeout, there's not a whole lot the Eagles can do uh, on second down. But uh, as we saw the negative play there, and the Warriors will have to make sure not to be backed up all the way into their own end zone. Um, they may have to just you know, push this ball forward on a QB sneak or something just to make sure, you know, be completely safe. Coming into the game, the offense of the Warriors had scored in 18 out of 20 quarters, only scored in one of two quarters here. They were blanked through the first 12 minutes. Johnson in the shotgun, standing on his goal line. He's looking to throw down field one on one, and it's intercepted at the 32. And still going is Baird. Flag on the play as Baird's trying to cut back, and he's finally upended at the 16-yard line. So we'll see what the flag, and that could be on the Warriors, which would give, with eight seconds left on the clock, the Eagles a chance for a last-second score. And it might be, I'm not sure if it was on a Warrior player, somebody on the bench. We'll see. Exactly what you did not want to happen to end a nightmare first half. Great play by Baird, the safety, who was just playing center field. The ball hung up there. He came over, picked it off at the 32-yard line, and got a good return out of it. Yeah, strange play call. Blake Wiley didn't quite have his head turned around when that ball was in the air, and the safety came over and made the interception. They're going to put a few seconds left on back on the clock, I think to about 11 seconds. Still waiting for the call and the penalty. Well, they're going to call it on the Eagles, so an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty will at least put the ball 
outside the 25 yard line at about the 28. Now the Eagles do have one timeout. They can try to take a shot into the end zone or they can try something a little bit over the middle, call timeout and try another field goal attempt. They missed their last one. But the penalty kept that drive alive. Coach Black with a chance, three receivers to the left side. There goes LeBlu out to the right. So now an empty backfield for Deaver. He only rushed three, throws over the middle, and that's almost picked off. Nice defense once again by the Warriors' Daniel Benkovics. Looked like Kretien was open just for a second. A little bit too high, and now there's just three seconds left on the clock. Too long for a field goal. This would be a 50-yarder. If you're not cashing paychecks, the chances of you, of you making that field goal are not very good. So you would think Deaver's just going to try something into the end zone, their version of a Hail Mary. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Five defenders standing at the 15-yard line for the Warriors. Can they get to Deaver? They rush him. He rolls to the right. He stops, throws back to the left. It's up for it. Tipped in the air. Is it caught? It is a touchdown. And pass is complete for a touchdown. Tipped into the air and caught. And everything continues to go wrong for the Warriors. Yeah, a lot of time for Deaver. Didn't quite have the arm strength to get the ball into the end zone. But it was tipped up in the air and a good play by the receiver. I didn't see who it was. Kretien was the one who touched it first right. and I wasn't sure. It might have been Donovan who came down with it right around the goal line. He came down with it and then fell out of the end zone, but they're going to say he caught it and the ball was across the goal line, and I think that's a good call. They're going to call it unsportsmanlike conduct play because there's a lot of celebrating after that play. We'll see if they take it on the extra point. It appears they will. And we do have a Woodlands Christian Academy player down Back by the original line of scrimmage, or about even further back. One of the players was rushing him, and that's big number 90, Eli Tokabens. Looks like he might have had a, perhaps a stinger as he's working with his shoulder, but he looks okay. So meanwhile, zeros on the clock, an extra point try or two-point conversion try for the Eagles, trying to get to the 40-point mark in the first half. Eagles did score big on their two wins, 57 and 60 points. Haven't reached the 40-point mark since then. So they're going to actually try a long extra point, which would be the equivalent of about a 35-yard field goal. So now it's up to the Warriors to just not get a penalty on this play, and they can finally, blessedly, go into the locker room after one of the worst first halves of football perhaps in school history. Everybody in lighter green and white is in shell shock here in the Woodlands. We knew Fort Bend Christian Academy had talent despite their two and three record, but nobody thought they would run away with it through the first two quarters of play. What I think the official finally did was go over and ask Chris McClanahan if he wanted that penalty assessed on the opening kickoff of the third quarter. And I think he said yes. So they'll try the extra point from the traditional spot, and that will force the Eagles to kick off from their own 25-yard line to start quarter number three. Which is really the smart decision. Not a person on that sideline green and white who has their 
head held high right now, understandably. All right, extra point attempt by the So it will be a conventional extra point for Ben Logbottom. Longbottom, that's a kick. Six touchdown passes for Brady Deaver in the first half of play. High snap. That's going to go back, and Longbottom's, he's trying to pick it up. He, he needs to go down. He'll take a little bit of pain for his efforts. Ryan Leslie tackles him, so the PAT fails. But now, blessedly, it's halftime. 39-7, Fort Bend Christian Academy leads the Woodlands Christian Academy. We'll be back to wrap up this first half briefly in just a moment. You're watching the Woodlands Christian Academy High School Football on Vibe Sports. Very quiet here at the Woodlands Christian Academy for the second home game in the district opener for the Warriors. That's because their team is down 32 points after just 24 minutes of play. Six touchdown passes by the Eagles quarterback, Brady Deaver. 44, 78, 79, 11, 24, and then 28 after a curious pass and interception from their own five yard line and the Eagles took advantage of the Warriors' error and scored with no time left on the clock on a tipped pass, and they lead 39-7. to The lone bright spot of Rourke Hawkins, 72-yard touchdown scamper. But if you're Coach McClanahan, what do you say, if anything, to your team in the locker room now? Uh, I, I don't know what you can say. It's, it's maybe some slight adjustments. You know, we saw the arm strength from Deaver maybe not be so good on that last play, so maybe press the defense up a little bit more. Um, just, you know, got to keep giving effort out there, and, and it's, you know, it's not going to be easy. These are, you know, there's, there's no huddle offense. There are athletic receivers that the Warriors haven't seen a lot of, and a couple mistakes for the Warriors just sort of compounded it at the end of that half. Um, with the, you know, personal foul and then the, the interception. Uh, but you know, as you said, some bright spots for the Warriors. Hawkins busted out a few, several big runs. Um, and just they can mix in some passing game. Uh, maybe they got more of a chance in the second half. Yeah, I think it's a lot less about X and that nose right now, Adam. And it's about just trying to get some semblance of confidence right. back. Because when everything at all levels of the ball, special teams, defense, and offense, and coaching for that matter, go wrong, nobody has any confidence. So that's what they're going to have to try and find coming out of the locker room. Even if they don't win this game, they want to end it on right. some sort of a high note. Join Warrior Boosters today to support your Warrior Athletic and Fine Arts programs. Go to twca.net slash boosters for more information. We're going to step aside and watch the halftime entertainment. Fort Bend Christian Academy 39, the Woodlands Christian Academy 7. You're watching Bike Sports in the Woodlands Academy, Woodlands Christian Academy High School Football. All right, let's give it up for the Fort Bend Christian cheer team. Thank you again to the varsity cheer. Hey, Beck, where'd you guys Now, go? taking the field Citizens is the Emerald Brigade yeah. dance team from Fort Bend Christian. Yeah, they did. The Emerald Brigade is in the direction of head varsity dance coach Angie Cibolero, assistant varsity dance coach Mackenzie Schimmett. Senior Peyton Daly. Junior, Madison Carter. 
Sophomore, Katie Bobar. Sophomore, Allie Gregorek. And freshman, Brianna Gracie. Let's give it up for the Emerald Brigade from Fort Bay Christian. attention to the track for our 2021 Woodland Christian Varsity Cheerleaders. Woo! They are led by cheer coach Hannah Gray. Salem Armstrong B. Peggy Carson. Lauren Edoni. <laughs> Ashlyn Fleener. <laughs> Raina Hummel. <laughs> Jocelyn Plagis. <laughs> Captain Madeline Magger. Catherine Melbourne. Hey, hey. Reese Muzzy. Kirby Page. Hey, hey. Lily Smith. Hey, hey. Lindsay Smith. Kate Spitz. <laughs> Mia Torres. <laughs> Anna Claire Usner. <laughs> and Captain Raquel Weisman. <laughs> Let's give it up here 2021 Woodland Christian Varsity Cheerleaders.
Sorry, ma'am. I'm gonna leave this here. I'm okay. feeling the pain. Okay. <laughs> I know. What's up, Rob? You mean interceptions?
Welcome back to the Woodlands, where TWCA is trailing after two quarters of play to Fort Bend Christian Academy, 39 to seven. Chris Martin, along with Adam Mueller, and in one of those, if it Murphy's Law halves of football, if it could go wrong, it did for the Woodlands Christian Academy Warriors, as the Eagles visiting team scored on all but one of their drives. And some of them were aided by mistakes, especially in the second quarter, by the Warriors. Uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, which extended a drive after a missed field goal, an interception in the last 30 seconds of the last of the first half, resulting in a long touchdown pass as time expired, and several other things. And we're in a 39-7 hole. The Warriors will get the football to start the second quarter. Is your back hurting from sitting in the bleachers or you were running late and didn't get your favorite seats? Head over to TWCA.net slash boosters to purchase seat back seats reserved especially for you so you can sit back comfortably and enjoy the games all year long from your favorite spot. And Adam Mueller, lots of coaches have been on the, the end of halves like that when you're playing a superior team. And in this case, maybe not as superior, but certainly 32 points ahead you just got to go out and say it's 0-0 and do the best you can yeah you talked about it at the end of the first half might might just be about concentration and effort for the warriors and, and just keep your head up keep going uh, don't there's a little bit of chatter between the players at the end of that first half just uh you know, keep your head up and, and keep trying. We, you know, we saw some good signs from the Warriors' offense, especially Hawkins with the running game. Um, it, it's, uh, you know, they could swing in their direction here, um, get the ball at the, you know, beginning of this half, and let's see what they can do. Technically, it's a four-score game, you know, with all four two-point conversions. It's right. got probably at least five, to be really fair. And uh, again. You have Derek Felder standing at his own 20. The ball went over his head before. He may trot back and reestablish himself. But remember, actually he won't because of the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Eagles at the end of the second quarter. They had to kick off from their own 25-yard line. So barring a penalty or something else, this should be decent starting field position for the Warrior offense. And it's going to come down to Hawkins at the 25. Going to set up a return. He's going to be hit at the 37-yard line. Now it's going to be up to both teams and the officiating crew to keep this game kind of in control so some of the tempers don't re-flare up again. Yeah, you saw right away the big hit there. Uh, don't, want the, don't want the boys getting in their faces too much there. Uh, but good starting field position for the Warriors here and uh, see what they can do. Now... We forgot to tell you, at the end of the first half, it was not Josh Johnson who threw that interception. He was on the sideline dehydrated. It was Kai Parker. And it's going to be Kai Parker again who comes out to start the second quarter, or rather second half, as the starting quarterback. He's got Leslie behind him. Starts at his 37. Play action looking right side. Has a man open in the flat. Nice catch. The 35, and across the 50-yard line, another big hit. But Blake Wiley with his second catch of the night. That one's good for about 15, or rather 13 yards. Yeah, and it's good confidence to have in your backup quarterback. Uh, you know, we saw the pass, which was fortunately intercepted at the end of the first half, but just rolls him out to the right side, and a good early completion to Wiley, who makes a good play. So again, we heard dehydration for Josh Johnson. We'll see if he's down there on the sideline. But it is Kai Parker starting at midfield after the first down. And he's going to give to Leslie for hurdles one man and gets hit as he sits down. Baird hits him. He's going to bring up second down. Ryan Leslie comes into the game averaging 11.6 yards a carry, 465 yards on 40 attempts. He has five touchdowns and a couple of 100-yard rushing games. Gets two on that carry. Now Hawkins is back in the game at the running back spot with three receivers to the right of Parker on second down. He looks that way, throws into the flat and incomplete. It would have gone for little yardage anyway as Jack Cole was there in the flat. He was hit as the ball hit his hands. Nice support that time by the defensive backs of the Eagles, third down. Yeah, a couple of vertical routes from Wiley, and I think that was Keaton Harvey on that far side. 
Uh, it just makes it simpler for Kai Parker. Uh, couldn't quite make the play there, though. And again, that was well read, so a completion right. probably would have been no gain anyway, perhaps even a loss of a yard. So now we'll see what Parker decides to do on third down and eight. Five defenders on the line of scrimmage are blitzing him backside. He's going to go long. Has a man running by him and just overthrows this target at the 15-yard line. Keaton Harvey had sprinted behind his receiver. The timing fade route, but Parker couldn't hook up with him, and it's fourth down. Yeah, I think that was Blake Wiley out there, but he, again, we see it's good arm strength there from Parker, and Wiley just pauses for a second in his route, not sure if the ball will get there, and it does, and he just can't quite get to the pass. You're right, it was Wiley, and Wiley's got to run all the way around the end zone to get back to the sideline, but in the meantime, LeMaster comes out to punt. It's kind of how it was for the first two drives for the Warriors in the game. They get a first down, but then are forced to punt. It's a low liner, and about to the 10. Can they get it before yeah, it goes into the end zone? They can! Nice job by Felder, downing it at the one yard line. So good punt coverage. It's actually about the half yard line. So with 10.51 left to play in the third quarter, Woodlands Christian Academy unable to score, but they do pin the Eagles deep, deep, deep in their own territory. Yeah, big possession here for the Warriors defense. See if they can pin them in, maybe get a little, maybe get a couple points on the defensive end, uh, but we know the Eagles will stretch it out to those out routes on the outside. Well, you said it, we haven't seen very many down downfield throws by Brady Deaver. So maybe they're gonna play a little bit closer on those receivers, and it appears they're doing that somewhat. So on first down, he throws the slant route, and it's knocked away, it's up in the air, incomplete. Felder tried to come back for it, and that was excellent man-to-man -man coverage that time by Daniel Benkovic on Kretien. Yeah, Benkovic does a great job, uh, not only hitting it out of the receiver's hands, but then keeping the ball in the air, sort of hitting it up, hope, hoping that Felder maybe can come from behind the play to make the interception. Uh, not quite, and ball still at the one yard line here. And that's of the play that was resulted in two long touchdown passes for the Eagles. This time they're just going to hand it off to LeBlu, who crosses the line of scrimmage and is still dragging tacklers. He'll be tackled short of the 10 at about the 9. But it's third down and two now for the Eagles. Yeah, I know we saw Elijah Jacobins go, go down at the end of that half, and I don't see him out there to start this half, and that could affect that front line of the worst defense. And LeBlu does not go down easily, as we've seen. Third down and two. We'll see if he gets the call here. And looks like it's going to be another motion penalty against the Eagles. And it is half the distance to the goal this time. That's the fourth procedure penalty. That's really been the, the big drawback to the offense of the Eagles is the penalties on the offensive line. So third and two becomes third and six. We'll see if Deaver tries a quick pass. Looking left side, has time, throws to the flat. Did he step in? He did not. A nice catch by Kretien, but his foot came down out of bounds. So it's three and out for Fort Bend Christian Academy. Only the second time tonight that's happened. Yeah, big stop for the Warriors, and they should get good field position here especially with this uh, Eagles punter pinned in his own end zone. And now the decision comes to try and come out to the punt, or do you let Felder, your good return man, catch it and perhaps get a really good return out of it. No punt returns for touchdowns, as we said thus far, for the Woodlands Christian Academy in 2021. Baird standing near his end line. Punts it away, no flags, and it's going to be just let go. And they're going to down the ball to the 45-yard line. And the ball is down at the 45-yard line. will be first and 10 for the Warriors. The Warriors should get the football because Felder didn't touch it. The officials haven't really signaled either way yet. Yeah, he made an attempt to catch the ball, but I think it just went straight through his arms. whistle came a little bit late. What they're going to say happened is that it touched a defender at the 45-yard line in Eagles territory.
So by, the ball is more or less dead if that's the case. So that's another break for the Warriors. They needed that. And with 9.56 left, they'll try and get on the board for the second time. Still Kai Parker at the helm. And Coach Black wants to know what happened on the Eagles sideline. He's going to – he's thinking that his team should have recovered it at the 44-yard line of the Warriors. But really, it's moot as to whether or not Felder touched it if it touched the defender first. Right. Ball's dead right there. Now, we should say that Felder, if he chooses, can field the football. But no matter what happens, the Warriors still have the choice to take the ball where it was first touched, which is here. And that's what they do. Looking to throw. Oh, that's dangerous and knocked away as they tried to set up a screen to the far side of the field to Cole. And it was well defended, incomplete, as coming up to make the play was James Donovan. Yeah, Wiley comes across the field and sort of looks like it's an option play developing to the right. And then they go back to the left um, where Jack Cole is there. And red, as you said, red by the Eagles defense. That's a tough play, which requires a lot of timing and Really, if you're a backup quarterback not taking a lot of snaps, those aren't the plays you're necessarily practicing. Second and ten. Give it to Hawkins trying to break outside. He'll get there, but only a short gain to about the 42-yard line. As you can see, uh, they're packing players inside the box in the middle of the field and daring them to run. So not much room for Hawkins. It's third and seven. Yeah, fully committed to the run there, the Eagles defense, and I... You know, we saw that option play. We saw Johnson run a lot. We haven't seen Parker run up to this point, don't believe. Uh, but certainly now a throwing down for the Warriors. If they feel he can run the option well, that might be a potential call. Instead, it's three receivers to the left. Now they put Hawkins on the right. Looks to throw, has time. Throwing long once again, one-on-one. -on -one. And that's much better coverage that time, incomplete. Blake Wiley was covered that time by Braylon Gardoni, and it's punting time again for the Warriors. Yeah, enough time for Parker to assess his options, and as we've seen, he's got the arm strength to make that throw, uh, but Wiley not quite out there to get it. Good man-to-man -man coverage. Really good coverage on all the receivers. It wasn't much for Kai Parker to do, and he decided to go one-on-one, -on -one, which given the circumstances wasn't necessarily a bad choice. Yeah. But LeMaster comes on to punt once again. He pinned him at the half-yard line last time. We'll see what he can do on this boot. A little bit of late pressure. Fair catch going to be called and made. Dropped momentarily, but getting on it is Brian Domino, and it'll be 15-yard line is where they'll spot it for the Eagles. 9.28 remaining in the third quarter. Still with a 32-point lead. Yeah, in terms of a, a field possession, field position game in this second half, it's been really good for the Warriors, and if they can stop the Eagles again here, they should get the ball in good field position again. Yeah, this is definitely the game that Coach McClanahan wanted to play, but it was those big old plays, long pass plays, that got the game out of hand quickly. And to LeBlou, trying to cut it back, makes one man miss. Now they're trying to strip the football, and LeBlou falls forward to about the 21-yard line, gain of six. LeBlou with the carry. Gains about five yards on the play. It'll be second down of five. Chris, I hate you. <laughs> so they up to the line of scrimmage in that no huddle. LeBlou again. That time he's hit in the backfield, but breaks the tackle and keeps going. It's going to be very close to the first down. And it looks like they're going to give it to him. So give credit to Blue Sam LeBlou. It's been very rare, if at all, that he's gone down on the first hit tonight. Yeah, and uh, we might see this more from the Eagles with this lead here in the second half, just the run up the middle and pounding that front line for the Warriors. But they're still going up tempo, which is interesting. LeBlou, as he pulls a couple of tackling – couple of linemen pulling on the play and we'll get about three yards out of it. Ball comes loose. What are the officials saying? And it's run into the end zone, but the officials are blowing it dead as Ezekiel Harado has the football. 
Officials are saying it looks like that the ball was down. And it is the Warrior ball, though. They're going to say it was recovered by Gerardo, but he was already down. So he can't run it into the end zone, but he did give his team the football inside the 30-yard line of the Eagles. Yeah, and a side effect of LeBlou not going down on the first contact is you get a he stood up, and you get a lot of Warriors defenders trying to strip that ball. We saw number 34 Austin Veldikins a couple times try and strip that. I didn't see who it was there, uh, but it seemed to work. Now, a flag is down on the field, and I don't know. That seems like it was a very late flag, but we'll see. That would be Ezekiel Harado's first fumble recovery of the season. I have a feeling that's going to stand. It just kind of depends where the ball is going to be placed. This may have an unsportsmanlike conduct foul on somebody. Yeah, sort of strange because, you know, we had the change of teams. Offense came out. Then it looked like the flag was thrown. I'm not sure. It's possible it could be on the coaching staff of the Eagles. What that was about. And that's what the coaches are talking to the officials right now about what happened. If it is against Fort Bend Christian Academy, it will be half the distance to the goal if it's a, normally a 15-yard penalty. Let's see if we can get a call from the official. Yep. Well, perhaps it's just a sideline warning or something. They're not marking the ball off. Well, now they're going to, now he's going to come talk to Coach McClanahan over here. So, really not sure what's going on. We can't take this opportunity to ask if you had to park a mile away and, and you made, had to miss kickoff. Guess what? You no longer have to stress about parking by joining Warrior Boosters at the championship level or higher. You will receive a reserved parking spot plus more perks. Visit TWCA.net slash boosters to join today. Well, after all that, the ball stays where it is. First and 10 on the 27-yard line of the Eagles. Kai Parker, play action, rolling right. Has a little bit of room. Still looking to throw, but being chased, going to tuck it himself now. Makes one man miss. Holds that ball out a little bit dangerously but manages to get four yards yeah rolls him out to that strong side on the right again uh, and can't find a receiver but makes a pretty good first down gain there so now we know he can run right pretty good coverage on the two receivers that he was rolling to didn't want to take a chance of putting it up and he gets call it three yards this time two wing backs on the right side Hawkins goes that way and is hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped. Up off the bottom of the pile is Ivan Jimmy Ducksworth. Ivan Jimmy Duckworth, number 55, makes the tackle for the Eagles. So now down. third down, they actually the gave Warriors. Hawkins a yard, but almost definitely four down territory for the Warriors. Yeah, we can see between plays, Kai Parker. A lot of times it's to run over and get the play from the coaches. I don't know if that's because he is a backup quarterback. Doesn't know all the signals. That yeah. could be it. Third down, looks to throw. Pressure from the outside. It throws the flat route. Cole trying to get upfield, and he'll fall forward at about the 21-yard line. So short gain of about three yards, so it'll be fourth down and six. And you call that play if you know you're going for it on fourth down. Yeah. Sebastian Bringleson comes in. Woodlands Christian Academy 0 for 1 on fourth down attempts. Missed on fourth down and three in the first half. Fourth and five for the Warriors. And Wiley in the slot. Cole split out wide right. Warwick Hawkins to the left. Kai Parker call it fourth and five. Play action, looking left side. A little bit of pressure. Now he's going to run it and have it throw it up and way out of bounds. Rorick Harkins was standing in the end zone. He looked alone, but it's, he wasn't completely alone. Had the ball gone up in the air, he would have had to battle for it. That time, Kai Parker just ran out of room, and the ball will go over on downs to Fort Bend Christian Academy. Yeah, and I think that's what he saw, the open receiver downfield in the end zone, but ended up sort of rolling to his left where the rushers were coming, and that made it a very difficult play to make. 
When he sees the film, he'll be able to see that he could have stopped and let a defender go by him. Maybe got a little bit more time in the pocket, but as a backup quarterback, you're not getting enough reps to learn that. So now it's first down. Deaver over the middle. Caught. And that should be another first down. Big hit by Austin Beldekins on the in route. The Deaver's first pass of this drive moves the chains. Looks to throw again, backside, and he steps up, avoids the blitz, throwing downfield, and dropped. Threw it behind his receiver, Donovan Dixon, who had a step on Felder. Gonna bring up second down and 10. Yeah, Max Olivier gets right up in his face, can't quite make the play. Maybe a break there for the Warriors. It looked like that might have been a big pass play. Just bobbles it incomplete. Give credit to Brady Deaver for reading the backside corner blitz, stepping out of it and getting a pass off and giving his receiver a chance to catch it. This time Deaver hands it to LeBlue. He's hit and actually dropped the ball, is out again. Officials are saying, they may say that LeBlue was already down after his three yard gain. So it's going to bring up third down and seven. Inside the five and a half minute mark of the third quarter. I tell you, Brady Deaver for the Eagles has looked extremely impressive. Yes, we said that he's had trouble throwing the ball downfield, but he's making excellent decisions and his short passes are mostly on the mark. Looks to the left side, wide receiver screen, caught Donovan. First down and more, and he's off to the races. Cuts back across the 30. Finally going to be gang tackled around the 22-yard line. Donovan Dixon. That was a play that he scored on earlier in the game, and that's a huge play that shifts the field position in favor of the Eagles. Yeah, and those Eagles playmakers don't go down easy, and first contact usually can't bring them down. And a big play for the Eagles to take the momentum here in the second half. 41-yard pass play. First and 10 from the 23, Deaver looking again. Throws into the end zone, wide open, touchdown. That time, touchdown, coverage Eagles. was blown, or actually it was just an excellent job by Brian Domino, who has touchdown reception number three on the night. Just ran, ran a post route, wide open in the end zone, and that time Deaver was on the mark on a downfield pass. Yeah, they got in their offensive rhythm there with the passing game. We saw a lot of running early in this quarter and now back to the passing and uh, right in the end zone. Domino with a 78 yard, an 11 yard, and now a 23 yard reception. And it is now 45 to seven with the extra point to come. That's Deaver's seventh touchdown pass of the night. Extra point is good. Extra point is good. 46 to seven, Eagles. Lead the Warriors, Warriors seven. and still, even though the Warriors showed a little bit of life on offense, it was the Eagles gaining control of the football and marching down the field and scoring it again. Yeah, it's that passing game, as we talked about Brady Deaver with the seven touchdowns, which almost sounds unreal, but it's uh, it's been hard to stop on that outside, and when they've gone to it, it's been difficult for the Warriors' defense to stop, and uh, hopefully they can... Maybe get the ball and get a long drive going here to uh, give their uh, offense some confidence and uh, take the defense off the field for a while. Yeah, that's all you can do is just try and keep converting. And remember, they had a short field as they recovered a fumble inside the 30-yard line of the Eagles, but then they went four and out, could not move it. And again, I mean, you have a backup quarterback in there. You you don't expect as much out of him as you do your starter, and that's understandable. It's really kind of unfair for to ask the sophomore to perform at the level that their starting junior quarterback has been doing. Yeah, and Roar Hawkins just hasn't had the room uh, that he had in the first half. They're really selling out that Eagles defense to the run, uh, so it's been more difficult for him. Josh Johnson is on the sideline, but he is not carrying a helmet, so. He is presumably done. If he was feeling bad, there's really no sense of putting him back into the game. 
that's out of hand like this and risking injury. As Hawkins with a crease is off to the races, breaks one tackle, but goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A little bit of shoving after the play, but decent field position for the Woodlands Christian Academy with 4.23 left in the third quarter. The lone score for the Warriors, a long scamper of 72 yards by Rorick Hawkins in the second quarter. First and 10 for the Warriors. Parker and Hawkins in the backfield and three receivers to his right. Coach McClanahan still trying to find a group of plays that Parker is comfortable with and that is gaining some yardage. There's a handoff right side to Hawkins trying to get outside and going to be tackled right around the line of scrimmage by Blaine Baird, maybe a yard gain. And clock stoppage, for some reason, might have. No, we do have a flag on the far side, and it is holding going to be called against the Warrior offensive line. We'll see if they decline the penalty or if they take it. First holding call on the offense for the Warriors tonight. Yeah, in terms of penalties, we haven't seen too many from the Warriors. Um, certainly a lot of uh, legal procedures, false starts from the Eagles side, but uh, Warriors have been fairly clean. Uh, just haven't been able to capitalize on that clean game. In fact, I'm trying to remember their only penalty before this one might have been that unsportsmanlike conduct on the field goal, which extended the drive for the Eagles. First down and 17 after the holding call. Parker throws into the flat. Has a man for a short gain. It's Keaton Harvey gets about four yards on the play. Second down and long. Yeah, good route by Harvey. That that hitch route is not an easy thing to do. You have to throw it before the receiver's looking. Uh, and they make the timing work there pretty well. Actually, a much better gain than that, about nine yards. About half of what they needed to get the first down. So that's encouraging. Bring up second down and eight. Give to Hawkins, hits the line. And check that, that's Leslie who's pushing the pile forward and he won't get the 40 yard line. Gain of maybe one. So Ryan Leslie getting some totes. Still gonna bring up third down, about six. To get the first down for the Warriors. Clock uh, running, 3.15 to play in quarter number three. If we haven't reached the playing for pride level yet, we are certainly there now. The Warriors just trying to do anything correct on offense, get some scoring done, down big. Parker looks to throw, throws over the middle, and it's intercepted at the 45-yard line. And it's Baird, that's his second interception. Of, no, check that, that's not Blaine Baird. Oh, yes, it is, Blaine Baird with two picks. He had the interception late in the first half, which set up the Eagles for their Touchdown pass with no time left on the clock. And now he picks off a Kai Parker pass, which was over the middle and just a little bit off target. Yeah, and Parker tried to look off the receiver, um, looking to this outside and then coming back to the middle. But Barrett does a good job of sticking to his assignment. And he's right there for the pick. Returns it to the Warrior 41-yard line. Deaver looks to throw again. Going long, another move and another wide open receiver. 10-5, touchdown. Touchdown, Eagles. Oh, another well-run route by Braylon Gardoni, who has his second touchdown catch of the night. He faked the flag route, ran to the post, ditched his receiver. And once again, the Eagles are in the end zone and have eclipsed the 50-point mark in this game. Yeah, very e easy for the Eagles offense here. Uh, Warriors defense really need to keep their heads up and, and keep fighting here, especially those defensive backs on the outside. That's the third one play drive, touchdown drive, ending with a touchdown pass tonight for Brady Deaver and the Eagles. Extra point is good. Brady Deaver with touchdown pass number eight. He had seven touchdown passes coming into tonight for the whole season. He has eight in less than three quarters of play here in the Woodlands. 
He also had 551 yards passing. He's got to have at least half that now. Yeah, it really tells you the, the level of teams that they were playing earlier this season. Very high, uh, much more difficult defenses, you know. Time to develop that no huddle offense. And no, no reason to use the no huddle when you score on the first play of the drive and uh, making it look easy out there. So it's 53 to seven. Brady Deavers had a, a whale of the last two weeks. Before last week's game, he had about 281 yards passing. That was through four games. Then he threw for 270 last week and is probably around that mark this week, if not higher. And as we said, he, he has more than doubled his touchdown pass total. So Longbottom's kicking leg is going to be a little bit sore as he kicks off yet again. The ninth time he kicks off. Felder and Hawkins standing back there this time. He gets the kickoff from the normal spot on the field. Hawkins is going to get under it and take it at the four. Cuts off one block up the middle. Hits the holes very quickly, and he's off to the races. He's got a blocker in front of him. Can he make a move and keep going? He is down the sideline. No flags. Rorick Hawkins with the first kick return touchdown of 2021 for the Warriors. 96 yards. What a run by Rorick Hawkins. Just Except Amazing. it's not going to count. I'm oh. sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Adam. I didn't see a flag, but there was one thrown at the 30. Apparently, they're going to call perhaps holding on that final block, yeah. which allowed Hawkins to get by the sideline. It was line. the kicker. I, I saw as he was pursuing. I didn't thought the kicker took the inside line and that there wasn't a holding, but that one hurts. The last man, just one man to beat there. So now both Hawkins and Felder have had special teams return touchdowns called back because of holding this year. They will get excellent field position to start the drive, but they will not get the points on the board. Hawkins return still leaves the Warriors a really good field position. It'll be first and ten for the Warriors. So I think they're going to put the ball on about the 40-yard line. They will, the 40-yard line of first Fort Bend Christian Warriors Academy. Two nineteen left to play in the third quarter. Parker's in there. That's Wiley. Across the four to the thirty-five down near the thirty yard line. Depending on where they spotted, he may have a first down. And Blake Wiley on the end around gets a nice ten yard gain. Yeah, and then McKeon in on Rourke Hawkins up the middle, so good play call, get some misdirection, get Wiley going across the field and uses his speed to get the first down. It's Wiley's first carry, he's now up to 41 yards on the season on eight carries. Also has two touchdowns, probably on that very play. All right, first and 10 for the Warriors. From the 30, Parker will hand off to Leslie, kind of a missed exchange, kind of bump into each other, but Leslie still manages to get a couple of yards out of it. Yeah, it looks like maybe there's an option there for the QB to hang on to the ball. We haven't seen him do it yet, but uh, maybe a good time soon for him to keep it and get to the outside. Same formation, second down and eight. Same play. This time he turns the other way and hands off to Leslie, who will get another couple of yards. Brought down by a couple of Eagles, led by Seth Montagne. He's third down and five for the Warriors. Parker comes over to the sideline to get the play, as we'll be inside a minute left in quarter number three. I look a little confused. Parker does anyway. See if it's another handoff to Leslie on third down and six. Nope. Parker going to throw. Has time. Throwing the fade route down the sideline. That's on target. Knocked away at the last second. Pass goes incomplete. 
That's excellent coverage on the backside by Jackson Powers, who was with Cole step for step, and breaks up the pass. Yeah, good, good throw by Parker. And it hit Jack Cole in the hands, just couldn't quite bring him down. But uh, again, good sign for the Warriors offense. They can't extend the field. Just couldn't get it to work that time. Right, just better defense. So now they'll go for it, fourth down and six. See if they let Parker put it up once again. They do. Steps up, throws, same shot, same different time. Wiley can't come down with it. Wiley got both paws on it, but again, good coverage at the very end to knock Wiley off his route just a bit. The ball tumbles to the turf in the end zone, and the ball goes over on downs once again to the Eagles. Yeah, again, one of those where Wiley uh, is not got to turn his head up and sees the ball coming to him and makes a great adjustment can't quite bring it down in the corner of the end zone. Uh, a couple of almost plays there for the Warriors. And, and again, like you said, give credit to Kai Parker. He put those on target and yeah. gave his receiver a chance. Yeah. They just couldn't beat the big defense that time. So now with the spread, Deaver in the backfield with LeBlue from their own 26 yard line. The blue will get it out to about the 30-yard line, and the Eagles do have a hurry-up offense, but they may let this clock run out to zeros and switch sides of the field and play the final 12 minutes and go home with what will very likely be a victory as they're up 53-7 to here in the Woodlands after scoring another couple of touchdowns in quarter number three. We'll be back for the fourth quarter of this one at the Woodlands Christian Academy. You're watching TWCA High School Football on Vibe Sports. Back for quarter number four here at the Woodlands Christian Academy. Second down and six for the Eagles, who have a hammerlock on this first district contest for both teams. Deaver looks, throws the curl route, first down across the 40. Nice snag that time by Braylon Gardoni. He'll get out to about the 49-yard line, his first catch since his second touchdown reception of the night earlier in this half. First down Spot the ball on the 48-yard line. It's a well-designed play. They give Deaver the option to throw the swing pass to his back or the curl route, and it's the curl route that's open with Gardoni. Deaver play action. Hit as he throws. Just throws it out of bounds. It's coming up in his face was number 62, Bryson Ivory, who's now getting some snaps on the defensive line for the Warriors. Ivory probably the first backup in there on the D-line for the Warriors. Deaver looks to the sideline. And is ready on second down and 10. Time will just give it to Blue. It's a man at midfield. Blue spit. Spins off him and gets into Warrior territory right around the 45-yard line. Going to bring up third down and seven. Yeah, it's good from the Warriors defenders to, to want to strip the ball, but also got to make good form tackles uh, and, you know, stick to the fundamentals. Uh, and 
Third down, especially important. And now, obviously, Coach Black has kind of put his offense in first gear, taking his foot off the pedal and letting some clock run. They do see the play clock in the end zone, so they can work it down before they snap on this third down and five. Play action looking right side. Now has trouble. It's going to be brought down at the 42-yard line back in Warrior territory, rather than Eagle territory. And Bryson Ivory gets his second sack of the season. And, and give credit to Deaver for not making a silly pass and for Ivory not for celebrating or, you know, having some extracurricular activities after the Right, sack. and it was uh, Felder downfield, uh, staying deep and making sure he's on his man, which uh, Deaver held the ball and gave Ivory the opportunity for the sack. So Baird will drop back to punt. This is obviously a lot better for him than standing in his end zone underneath his goalpost like he did the last time he punted. And they're just going to let the play clock run down because it's showing zero, so they'll take a delay of game, although it's not like they needed the extra yards. He would have, they're 58 yards away from the end zone now, so it's not like they need the extra yardage to try and pin them. Now you watch that. He'll put it on the two-yard line with a roll now. But that's one of those penalties that Coach Black really won't mind that much. Felder standing now at his 25-yard line. Snap is better this time. And there, it's a low-line driver, kind of a shank, and it will go out of bounds right around the 40-yard line of the Warriors. That was about a 21-yard punt. So good field position for the Woodlands Christian Academy with 9.49 left to play in the ball game. TWCA desperately trying to get something positive. There is one thing that they can play for in addition to just pride. Their defense has not allowed any points in the fourth quarter this season. Now, granted, this is a Definitely a different situation, but still, that's something that if you want to, you can still try and keep that streak alive if you're the defense. And two plays into the fourth quarter, their defense succeeded with a nice big sack. And I've seen the coaches on defense and offensive side really trying to keep their players' heads up and keep their attitude up here. Parker's going to run the option this time, going to keep it himself, trying to get to the outside, and that was strung out nicely by the Eagle defense. Parker. Going to be upended at the line of scrimmage. Caleb Bratcher in there, along with Baird from the secondary. Second down and 10. Yeah, and that's, that's that option we were talking about. Parker keeps it. Uh, but great, good pursuit by the Eagles defense. Well, they tried Parker with the option and didn't work as well as with Johnson earlier in the game. This time he looks to throw. He's going to have to stop, pull it down, and has to throw it away. I'm not sure if he saw Max Granville coming from behind him who almost got a hand on the ball. But Parker got rid of it and avoided the sack. Third yeah, down. and that's one that takes reps. You know, his first option's not there, so he looks back over the middle of the field. Maybe a little bit of panic there, not sure where to put the ball. Uh, but good to practice that. Good to, you know, go through your options and first one's not there, second, third, make it happen, because he had some time. So now third down and 10, Leslie is behind him. He's got two receivers to the left side. To give this to Leslie, he's bottled up, breaks a couple of tackles, but won't get more than a yard. Leslie gains about one yard on the play. So once again, LeMaster will lead the punt team onto the field for the Warriors. I guess the best thing you can say about this half thus far is the Warriors really haven't made any mistakes. They've played an even ball game for the most part, not on the scoreboard. They haven't scored yet in the, the second half. But right, Considering the backup quarterback and Eliza Jacobins, they're the big man in the middle on defense has been out. So, you know, it's not full strength Warriors team. Master gets the punt away. Fair catch called for, but the ball bounces in front of the receiver, and it's going to be down 
right at the 20 yard line with 8 10 left to play in the ball game. Warrior Boosters is proud to announce that this year's 2021 fall season sports sponsor is Foster Fence. Thank you to the Holloway family for your generous sponsorship and for supporting Warrior athletes and fine arts students. We'll see if it's Deaver who comes back out onto the field or if the backup quarterback for Fort Bend Christian Academy will get some snaps. They don't have a backup quarterback listed. But it will be number 15. Not sure who that is, actually. I'll try and find out for you. But they are getting some backup players in. Nice tackle for loss is getting some reps in the backfield is Seth Montagne, primarily a linebacker. Jake Melber makes the stop, tackle for loss, second down and 12. I'm going to guess that's Adam Trosclair. Oh, Colby Sellers, excuse me. Colby Sellers is going to take it himself. And first down and more, and he wants to get on the scoreboard too, but Melber comes back in pursuit, stops him at the 41-yard line. That's an impressive 23-yard 23, 23 run by Colby Sellers. First down for the Eagles. There's only two quarterbacks listed on the roster besides Deaver, and neither of them are assigned numbers. But we have been told that it is Sellers. He's going to take his time as the clock winds inside seven minutes. Actually looks to throw. He's going to roll to his right. Throws. Yeah, I think that's complete, I believe. At around the 40-yard line of the Warriors. So Sellers, that's a nice little arm on the backup. Yeah, a six-foot freshman. He looks pretty, looks pretty good and could have a good future for the Eagles. Now they're, like call, they're calling it incomplete. Yeah. Even though I, thought he, I thought he had a foot down, but it could have been on the line. Second down and 10. So they move it back to the original line of scrimmage and do it again. Chain gang is a little bit out of sorts because they see it, they're showing it first and seven. They actually gave the ball to Lucas Vargas Diaz, who's listed as an offensive lineman, and he gets positive yards, going to bring up third down. Down for the Except we, there's a player down for the Eagles. He goes back to his stomach. One of the linemen. You hate to see this so late in a ball game, which is well out of reach. To quickly recap what's happened in this ball game, it's been the Brady Deaver Show for Fort Bend Christian Academy. Eight touchdown passes. And three of them, three receivers for the Eagles, have multiple catches. Marcus Gretien, Brian Domino, and also, excuse me, Braylon Gardoni. Domino actually has three touchdown receptions. James Donovan is the other receiver Fort Bend Christian Academy with a touchdown catch, and that was off a tip by Cretien on the final play of the second quarter. Brady Deaver's night is over, and a very impressive one at that. It's actually Grant Poss, who's one of the starting offensive linemen, being helped off slowly. Hope he, that young man is okay. So once he gets off the field, they'll start the clock and they'll bring up third down at five. As we said, Warriors still have a perfect streak in the fourth quarter for their defense. They'd like to preserve that here, whether they're facing backups or not. They've got to get through at 625 without giving up a score to at least keep that streak alive. Sellers with two receivers either side. And he's going to give it to his running back. 
who is stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It's Montagne. And I'll bring up fourth down and six. See if the Eagles send out the punting unit or if they'll, yep, here comes Punter and Baird. See if they take another penalty. Warriors also getting some backups in there. We mentioned Jake Melbourne. But their kick returner, Felder, is back there. And he's joined by Jacob Rios, who's kind of the up back. We actually have a different punter this time. Felder's going to have a chance at the 24, but he'll take a fair catch. The punter, actually Keen himself, saw him warming up earlier. So the Woodlands Christian Academy will take over at their 24-yard line with 5.28 left to play. The Woodlands Christian Academy going to fall to 0-1 in district play. That's their, it'll be their first loss of the 2021 season. Fort Bend Christian Academy will even their record at three up and three down and break their, their losing streak to get their first district win. Woodlands Christian Academy coming off an impressive 48-6 win over San Augustine on the road a week ago. The scoreboard has flipped in tonight's game. Parker to Leslie actually has some room following some blockers and get out to about the 29-yard line and pick up a four. So no rest for the weary for the Woodlands Christian Academy. They've got to get on the road next Friday night to take on probably the other team besides the two team, these two teams who are favored to win in the district, and that's Second Baptist. We saw them play earlier this year, and they're a strong team. Then after that, three games left, back at home against Versati Catholic, on the road, or actually yeah, on the road at St. Joseph High School, is Kai Parker. Gonna try and get the first down, and he does. He'll cross the 35 to the 36-yard line. That St. Joseph game is the final road game of the regular season for the Woodlands Christian Academy, but they've got to hit the road to Victoria, and it's a Saturday morning game at 11 a.m. So early wake-up calls the TWCA players on the day before Halloween. Then they finish up the 2021 regular season back here on this field against Lutheran South Academy. They made the playoffs in the last non-COVID season. They'd like to get back there as Ty Parker looks to throw. Throwing long once again, one-on-one, -on -one and overthrows his target. Keaton Harvey, step-by-step -step for him was Jackson Powers, who's played well on that cornerback. Also getting some totes on the offensive side of the ball. So second down and 10. Yeah, I like the play call uh, from the coaching staff. You know, it, good good opportunity to try different plays, uh, get some Kai Parker some reps. Um, you know, that one fell incomplete, but uh, Harvey and Parker seem to have a pretty good connection uh, early here. See if they let Parker put it up here on second and long. Instead, they'll give it to Leslie. Has some blockers in front of him across the 40. First down and more into the secondary. One man to beat at the 30, at the 20, and he's going to outrun him. Ryan Leslie into the end zone. 60-yard touchdown run for Leslie, his sixth of the season. Yeah, I mean, you know, it it's, uh, feels good. It's uh, This is why you keep your head up and you keep playing as the Warriors because uh, you can get a breakout run. We've seen... Hawkins get a couple big runs in this game, and now Leslie gets the big run, and it, uh, good momentum going into practice, uh, I think for next week, at least for the Warriors. Bruno Babato's trotting on with the tee to try the extra point. Missed a field goal earlier in the game. Now one for three on the season. This kick is away. And he's two for two on PATs. 
3.41 left to play in the ball game, and the Warrior fans have something to cheer about. A 60-yard scamper by Ryan Leslie to make it 53-14. to So now it's up to the defense to try and keep their perfect fourth quarter streak alive on what may possibly be their last defensive series of this game. McClanahan, he could possibly try an onside kick. Tried one earlier in the game and it almost worked. Now you just even, now you're just risking giving the Eagles half the field to go down score one more time and maybe hit 60. You don't want to do that. Yeah, don't with that. Of course it is an opportunity to try things you may not look, do normally. And we see Vivado looking over to the sideline here. And we'll see what he does, but there is room for him to pooch it over everybody except the return man right. in Chrétien, who's at back of his 15. But yep, he's getting his instructions from his coach. And I think he's going to kick this one deep. It's actually going to bound into the end zone. So actually the first touchback for Bobato tonight. And it will give the Eagles the ball on the 25 yard line. Warriors offense have a lot to look for, look at. But they just, they certainly made some mistakes, especially in the second quarter, really all sides of the ball. But their offense didn't play well enough to win but you really got to give credit to the defense of the Eagles, probably more so than the woes of the offense, I would think. Yeah, that's really limiting the passing game and the pursuit we've seen from the Eagles. I mean, a, lot, a few big hits that the Warriors have taken, and, you know, they've gotten up from those, but a few big plays, and, and you can hang your hat on that for sure. That's right. Big plays is definitely what killed the Warriors tonight. Sellers sticks it in the belly of his running back then decides... He'll take the high road and take the punishment instead of making his buddy take it. He's dropped for about a four-yard loss. Sean Kane gets into the backfield and gets a TFL. Coach Black in no hurry. Of course, district play for the for Fort Bend Christian Academy. They take on Frasati Catholic at Northland Christian High School next week. Taylor's going to try this side. And the option play is stopped at the 16-yard line. So two straight losses for Fort Bend Christian Academy to make it third down. After that, on the 22nd, Fort Bend Christian Academy hosts St. Joseph. They'll travel to Lutheran South Academy. And then to end the season, they're back at home in Sugar Land to take on Second Baptist, which could be very well the game that decides the district title. Yeah. Still lots of games to play before then. Third down and 18, and Seller's going to take it himself. Actually throw it into the flat, and the ball skipped on the turf. And complete pass. So punting time for Baird and company for the Eagles, and give credit to the defense. Not only did they not fold, they also had a couple of impressive tackles for loss on that drive. Yeah, it's been a good fourth quarter for the um, Warriors defense. and it, it would seem that maybe that, that fourth quarter streak they have going, and just a couple more minutes left in this game, might be able to maintain it. The backup punter once again. It's a low knuckler. Felder is going to have to let it bounce in front of him. That was almost, almost touched. We're going to see, was it touched by a player, a defensive player? No, nope, they're going to say it was actually touched by an Eagle player first at the 46-yard line of the Eagles. So that's where the Warriors will take over. Yeah, it looked like one of the Eagles players maybe tried to push the ball <laughs> into Felder there uh, to get, you know, get possession back. But Felder does a good job and gets out of the way. First and 
So Hawkins is back into the ball game. He's in front of Kai Parker. And a timeout going to be called by the Eagles. Clock was already stopped. Maybe they just, Eagles. if they have backups in there that aren't lined up correctly, coach wants to make sure they're set. Every coach, even in a blowout game, winning or losing, is still coaching his players because that's that's the best time to sh for the players to show you what they have. Right, good teaching moment. I mean, you can't, as we talked about, you can't simulate a game uh, in practice as much as you, you know, take reps against, you know, your teammates. There's nothing like playing a, a, an opposition. Uh, so, it's coaching them up a little bit, getting them back out there. So the two bright spots on offense come from the running backs, Rorick Hawkins with a long touchdown run of 72 yards, and then Ryan Leslie moments ago in this quarter scampered for 60 yards to pay dirt. That's all the scoring offense for tonight for the Warriors, unless they can get a final touchdown. Parker looks to throw. He's going to put it up once again, up for grabs, and great coverage yet again by Jackson Powers. He actually almost made the interception, pass intended for Keaton Harvey. Yeah, and Harvey sort of becomes the defender in that situation. He's behind the ball and does enough for the incomplete pass. Jack Van Til comes into the ball game again. See if they give Hawkins a chance to tote the rock. Ball sitting in Eagle territory. Second down, Second down it is Hawkins. Bit of a crease, makes a man miss in the hole, and is tackled at the 42-yard line. Yeah, the Woodlands Christian Academy has not converted, has never scored in this game from Fort Bend Christian Academy's side of the field. Both of them were long touchdown runs, which started at their own side of the field. Clock running, 140 left to play. Third down and six. And it's Hawkins trying to get to the outside. Nice dipsy doodle move, but even better pursuit is coming up to make the stop. It's Bryce Graves. No Hawkins. So Hawkins going to bring up fourth down. Now Coach McClanahan may just let the play clock run down and call timeout. Yeah, Hawkins, uh, I think maybe the wise move, not not trying to make too much happen. I think he saw that play was broken up and, uh, you know, don't, don't want to get injured at this point in the game for sure. Well, they are going to run another play and go for it on fourth down. Ten seconds on the play clock, and they're not quite lined up. Now they're ready. We'll see if they let Kai Parker put it up. They do. For only a three-man rush, he'll throw to the right, in trouble. Throws it. Possible. Almost a great catch, but a clean hit as Blake Wiley went up for it. But knocked away yet again by the secondary of the Eagles. And we got to give credit to the Eagles secondary. They've made a lot of broken up passes tonight. Yep, yep, good coverage there on Wiley. Uh, made it made it very difficult. And we've seen it in the second half, a few plays where it's uh, tip balls right at, the, right at the point of contact of the receiver's hands. Uh, and the Eagles defense has been very good. Can't completely close the door on the Eagles. They did score in the final minute of the first half. There's 42 ticks left on the clock here in the fourth quarter, but they have it on their own 41. And you would think they'd just run it up the middle or take a knee and start the lengthy drive back to Sugarland. It appears that's what they will do. So Colby Sellers gets a few snaps in, gets some stats. And now he will take a knee and he does, they will, they do not need to run another play. So hopefully both coaches will start leading their teams toward the center of the field. And the Warriors will try their best to forget the nightmarish first half that put them out of this game early. They did manage to score a touchdown in the second half and held the Eagles to just two scores in the second half. But when it's all said and done, it's the Fort Bend Christian Academy Eagles coming into the Woodlands and beating TWCA 53-14 to in the district opener for both teams. We'll be back to wrap this one up briefly in just a moment. You've been watching TWCA High School Football on Vibe Sports. Warrior fans, please plan to join us next week.
as we travel to Houston to face the second Baptist Eagles. We ask everyone now, please stand and join the band, cheerleaders, and players in the singing of the alma mater. What time are you going to be there tomorrow? I will see you there. I'm excited. Well, as the players shake hands on the 50-yard line, Early chippiness, hopefully forgotten. As Fort Bend Christian Academy came into the Woodlands Christian Academy, scored on their first three drives and never looked back. They actually scored on three offensive plays in a row. They had three one-play drives, each of them 12 seconds, each of them long touchdown passes. And Brady Deaver ends the night with eight touchdown passes for Fort Bend Christian Academy. The Eagles went going away 53-14. to He only scores come on the ground for the Warriors. Ryan Leslie ended the game with a 60-yard touchdown run. And Rorick Hawkins, the only first-half score for TWCA, 72 yards. But a lot of things to clean up, a lot of mistakes in the second half, uh, a lot of bad decisions by players and perhaps coaches. And so I think everybody on the sideline tonight really has to look in the mirror and take stock and try and make some improvements before next week's game. Yeah, sometimes uh, games like this are necessary. You know, the 5-0 and start for the Warriors, feeling good, haven't really felt uh, this feeling before this season. Um, and, you know, some good signs, big runs, as we talked about. And, of course, the fourth quarter scoreless streak from the Warriors' defense continues. Um, but, yeah, certainly a, a teaching moment for the coaches and uh, one of those nights where you, uh, you pick it up and practice harder next week. Coming into this game, Woodlands Christian Academy had allowed 64 points total on defense. They give up 53 tonight, but they do keep their fourth quarter scoreless streak alive for what that's worth. And they are back on the road next week to take on Second Baptist in another key district matchup. I want to thank everybody involved with this broadcast and thanks to the hospitality for everybody at the Woodlands Christian Academy. And for Adam Mueller, I'm Chris Martin saying so long from the Woodlands. TWCA falls to FBCA 53-14. You've been watching the Woodlands Christian Academy High School Football on Vibe Sports.